So hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's hot topic webinar on the recent Robinhood IPO. Let me just check here the chat box. Yeah, that looks good. One sec. Hello traders. So there you see hello traders now. This is this is where you can ask your questions in the live event in the Zoom meeting here. Um, and so if you follow this webinar here um, on YouTube, uh, if you watch the recording, uh, please feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel from Admirals here. Um, if you like what you will see here, then leave a thumb up here. Um, what else? Ask your questions. If you have any questions, uh, please post them right below the video. Also here, the recording, um, I looked that I answered them on time so that you get um, all answers which you which you need here um, and hopefully profit from your trading for the next IPO, next hot IPO. And this is exactly what we want to look at here today. So let me just share my screen. There we go. Um, and um, so just let me, I hope that you can hear me, by the way. So uh, I was just a little irritated. So hopefully everything's fine. Let me just check the chat box. Yeah, so all good, perfect, okay. Um, so today we wanna have a look at the recent Robinhood IPO, use Robinhood, in fact, um, as one of the latest and probably one of the hottest, still one of the hottest um, uh, names on the street, in fact. I will show you um, um, what I mean by that and how I measure that, in fact. In a few seconds, I prepared something, which is not part of the presentation, but a website um, you can check then to, uh, yeah, yeah, check out the most um, mentioned ticker symbols here. In fact, um, on uh, Reddit and Reddit forums, you probably remember the GME saga, AMC, all that stuff. And Robinhood is also one of the most mentioned names there. And um, you can already see this. I mean, I, I'm talking about Robinhood, um, a broker dealer. We will um, introduce um, the company a little later on um, what the IPO delivered, how to trade IPOs. This is the main fact or the main main topic we will look at here today. So for the future, you can use this knowledge here and then hopefully uh, use it in your trading in the future to make profitable trading decisions when uh, an IPO takes place. It's um, a, a time when a stock um, is initially publicly traded and Thus, we don't have any kind of chart um, history or something like that. We, we can't draw any um, um, lines into our chart and uh, get a, a clear picture um, um, from a pure technical perspective. But most of what's going on on the IPO date is, in fact, um, mainly based on psychological reasons and um, ego to some extent from so-called underwriters, um, what this is and, and who were the underwriters here for Robinhood. It's also something we'll mention. Um, we will talk about cognitive dissonances in this co context here, cognitive um, um, biases, and thus um, a so-called anchor effect, which also played out really nicely here um, at the uh, Robinhood IPO. And um, so you can use this knowledge then and hopefully profit um, from it in your, uh, in your future um, in your future IPO trading, if you plan to build a career from there. In fact, there are traders out there who make a living only by trading IPOs, in fact, um, but there have to be certain criteria or certain parameters which, which have to be met then, in fact, to trade it profitably in the long run. Before we start, um, first of all, I'd like to uh, here introduce Admirals to you, um, the broker who is making all this possible, currently uh, rebranding. So Admirals was earlier Admiral Markets, in fact, and um, the rebranding currently taking place um, um, comes around the time when uh, there is now um, a broader market, which is um, um, targeted from, from Admirals, in fact, to, to be recognized as a, um, a financial service provider, not just being recognized as, and um, Admirals established a name over the last 20 years, in fact, in the FX and CFD um, 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 business here as one of the global players, main players, in fact, in this field, um, with also over 8,000 financial instruments being offered here in Germany. For example, we refer to Admirals as the DAX expert. So uh, the broker who has probably the most competitive offering when it comes to DAX trading, probably, um, I'm not really sure, but it's really difficult to find a broker with a better offering if there is any um, out there. And um, that alone um, is one of the reasons why here in Germany, for example, Admirals is among the most mentioned um, brokers um, 
when it comes to active trading. Um, in addition to that, it's also a multi-asset broker, um, also offering invest solutions, physical stocks in this context. You can offer a broad, in, um, or you can you can in, invest in a broad range of ETFs. For example, we mentioned several ETFs in earlier webinars here. Um, and now the next step is taking place. You can also, um, for example, uh, get a credit card from Admirals. In addition to that, in the future, there will be also other um, 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 offerings. For example, when it comes to crypto, the crypto space, there are some uh, plans what could be offered there to, the, to, the, to a broader audience. In fact, to make long things short, Admirals.com. For further information, um, feel free to check out the website. If you have any questions um, um, in your native language, especially um, here, one very important aspect comes into play. It's one world, one broker. So it's um, offices around the globe, in fact. So chances are quite high that you will get um, someone um, on the phone who is uh, speaking your language. And that's something noteworthy because I was working in a bank 20 years ago, but still. And uh, so if you have, um, um, people from other parts of the world asking you a question. I mean, English, but also German to some extent, well, everything's fine. And, and especially English, this is a, the a language everyone is speaking. Um, but uh, still, sometimes it's just um, a lack of trust just by the uh, by this language barrier. And this is one of the reasons why also you should definitely give Atmos here a look. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them. They are happy to ask answer all your questions. Um, now, in addition to that, or not in addition to that, but now let's start with today's topic. So today's agenda, what we want to look at here, some bullet points. First of all, I'd like to introduce to you IPOs in general. What is an IPO? Um, I mean, it will be a small introduction, but still necessary here to then build from there. Um, I'll use this uh, then to show why um, IPOs and the trading of IPOs is in fact very, very interesting and very, very attractive. And um, then I'd like to point out um, here why, especially the Robin Hood IPO um, recently, which took place here, was very, very interesting, very hot. And in fact, really, when you prepared it well, when you knew what levels to watch, there was already a great chance to, to enter a trade. I mean, then <laughs> you probably have followed the price action with this massive squeeze higher, several trading halls that taking place that was last week of trading. So there was kind of a, a potentially gamma squeeze taking place. Um, ridiculously high um, levels, which were uh, which we saw being traded, um, the stock pushing to some, uh, or that was several seconds, but still um, traded um, as high as 80, 85 dollars or something like that. Currently in the lower 50s, um, still giving it nevertheless a quite high market cap. Um, and not really sure whether this is justified or not. But in the current market environment, with all the um, um, not just inflation fears, but also liquidity delivered from central banks, I think, um, then we, we, we uh, certainly see, see um, um, a current market environment in which rising stock prices and thus also um, stock prices from, from uh, such companies here are somehow to be expected, let's say. Um, still, um, I'm not really sure, probably, and this is the last bullet point here, um, probably we will see some kind of end of the meme stock boom. Um, so I will show you what I mean by that. And we can could already see it um, at the day of the IPO. It was very fascinating to see that. Um, as of now, things have um, turned out to be to, to be fine again. Let's put it that way. So AMC just delivered numbers. They probably have seen it. That was yesterday or uh, today is Wednesday. I think it was Monday after after markets closed. I think um, numbers were better than expected. Still, the stock sold off yesterday. Um, uh, it's 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 not necessarily only AMC, um, but still also something to to keep in mind here um, that the IPO from Robinhood is probably um, about to. Uh, that's probably the last round. Let's say uh, it's the last bell which is ring which rings here, and then probably we are about to see some um, elevated volatility in the uh, in the in the months to come. Especially why this is also, I'd like to show this to you here uh, within this presentation. But first, let's start here with um, the IPO, an introduction to this topic in general. So what is an IPO? And um, an IPO is an initial public offering, that's short, IPO, initial public offering, and it refers to the process of offering shares of a private company um, then to the public in a new stock issuance. And then the public share issuance here allows a company to raise capital from public investors. 
So you can you can say, okay, we are selling shares and then we um, uh, get money for this um, and, and then we invest the money, let's say, in whatever um, um, business we are, we are in then. And um, so the transition from a private to a public company can be important um, 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 for, for not just private in, investors, but also to uh, former employees, in fact, to uh, realize gains from their investment um, respectively, their um, their proceeds they probably receive within their compensation plan, um, and uh, so this is this is something which which is of interest here. So uh, and and then also something to to keep in mind, especially when when selling pressure occurs, uh, where why selling pressure on the IPO date could occur. So um, I was um, working with a with a, a company who went public, um, and I was only a trading assistant there, a trading assistant slash I was a student, but still they. Um, said um, if you want you can you can also get some some shares we'll we'll sell them to you I think was uh, was was um, um, with discount of something like one hundred percent or so so um, you can um, um, buy up to one thousand shares so um, the price is in this case two two euros and uh, that being said. Then um, um, I was able to sell them right on the day of the IPO, or with one day delay because of of, of um, um, compliance um, questions here and inside information, all that stuff. And I could sell them at um, uh, four euros in this case, and so I made an initial gain of of two thousand euros, in fact, on the day of the IPO. Um, and uh, so that being said, this is something which usually happens. And um, last year, for example, uh, there were several companies also going public, like Airbnb, for example. And when I mentioned the IPO, um, which, which took place, there was someone who reached out to me on uh, Twitter, in fact. And um, what he said was that he knows um, someone working for the company now making some serious money with um, um, all this, this massive gains which have been seen there. Um, and then also in the pre-market and the IPO being a big success trading out of um, um, the, the we call it price range here in this context on the upside massively with, with, a, with, with a massive premium here. Um, and that being said, that could be very attractive in fact for, for um, um, private investors or who former employees who got uh, paid some of their um, um, proceeds in stock in fact to then sell them to the uh, to the public on the day of the IPO, and um, so in 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 this in this context, then um, it's also possible then that um, public investors then can participate in the offering at the beginning at, at least. So you can you can go to your bank and then you can start to um, 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 to, to to get shares, your hands on shares. What, what, if they are available, so this is the question there, um, and this is usually um, the usual procedure in this context. But what we are interested in is, in fact, um, our our main focus is um, trading the IPO itself. So it's not about I, I'd like to to profit um, here from from I, I don't know. I, I get the shares for let's say ten dollars, and then I try to sell them at, at at twelve or something, and betting on that the IPO will be a success. But we want what, what we want to do is we want to formulate a clear plan and formulate levels to trade off then, um, which are only available at the day of the IPO, and use our knowledge here to make profitable trading decisions and short term trades then in this context. And um, this is especially interesting for a so-called professional traders. So guys who make their living trading the markets in this context. Um, because, and that's why they look at IPOs. And some of them, as I already said, they, they make a little living out of trading IPOs here, solely out IPOs. Some of them probably um, um, add to these IPOs. Also, um, uh, uh, secondary offerings, for example, similar idea behind them. Um, but the thing is, and this is the reason why they look at them, they offer... I, I put this in quotation marks, but it's easy trades. Um, but what I refer to, or what, what I mean by that is easy is um, you can clearly spot levels from which to trade off and based on then other levels as potential target regions, you can um, you can find trading setups here, formula trading setups, you can then trade, which have a very, very attractive risk reward. And um, they are usually very clean also. Um, so it's it, it's not possible to have um, plenty of indicators and, and several of other market participants doing uh, trading the, this level because of another decision or probably ignoring the level uh, because it's not within their plan or something like that. But here in this context, we do not have these levels. 
um, which 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 um, offer clear levels from a technical trading uh, technical analysis technical analysis perspective but what we only have is in fact we have some psychological areas once you know them which you can then use to make your profitable trading decisions and um, yeah as i already pointed out so usually these trades offer excellent risk reward trades and um, in fact it's not just that um, um, professional traders trade them alone but um, it's also um, sometimes common i'd say um, that we see the formation of so-called syndicates here. So um, that means that several um, um, traders, or a syndicate you can you can also define this as an alliance of, of businesses here um if you, if we join each other then in a group to manage a large transaction in this case so trading uh the ipo bigger than they were capable of doing if they um, were trading alone in fact and um, so the next thing, and this is something which is which is also very, very important to note, um, what we'd like to see, especially to make all this um, um, making let, 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 let it make sense, let's say, so that these levels really work. Um, what we'd like to see is that the IPO has a so-called bus. Um, so it's it's a bus around the IPO. So everyone is talking about this. Everyone is focusing on that. And you can you can measure that to some extent here. In fact, on uh, social media, especially um, especially on um, 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 forums like Reddit, for example, but also Twitter um, to some extent, Fintwit, the, the um, 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 guys talking here about the stock and um, also the Wall Street Journal mentioning it, the, the financial media in general mentioning the IPO. Um, and this is, to, in case of Robinhood, that was the case. And what has been the case around the Coinbase IPO, for example, you probably remember that was in April, that was around the top in Bitcoin. Everyone was talking Bitcoin. Still, everyone is talking Bitcoin. Everyone is talking crypto. Everyone is focusing on coin. What's going on here? So as today, for example, you will see that. Um, I mean, the stock has seen some quite heavy selling, let's say, over the last months. That was mainly driven, certainly, also by the um, 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 massive um, correction we've seen in Bitcoin in general. So from 60,000, 64,000, I think that was the all-time high around, um, we dropped to and some um, slightly below 30,000, now bouncing um, a little heavier. Um, but still, um, the, the stock didn't see such a great performance. Yesterday, they reported earnings, came better than expected. Um, and today, there's again, buzz around this. Everyone is talking about crypto. Everyone is talking about earnings. And again, so this is something to, to keep in mind. This is like, I, I'd say, I, I call this common sense. If you see that um, there's an IPO around the corner, and we will certainly mention it here during our um, Hot Topic webinars or Trading Spotlight webinars, or Marcus will mention it in the morning, in his morning show. Um, you, you have already an idea what we are looking at and, and if an IPO is hot or not. And um, so if this happens then, if this bus is, um, then the levels you can trade off, in fact, if this bus is given, then the levels become even clearer to trade off. So um, for example, here in this context, as I mentioned, the price above the initial pricing um, uh, range, for example. Um, so in case of, of, of the Robin Hood IPO was 38 to 42. So that was the pricing range, which was given out. Um, and if we now see a print, first indications of the price, um, then, above this range, well, that certainly points to high demand in this context, which um, is also um, attracting interest from the sidelines, let's say, and then pushing into the stock and probably pushing it even higher than over the day. So a trend on the upside then um, develops. What was now interesting, we can already take this here as an information. Um, in case of the Robin Hood IPO, for example, we had this pricing range between 38 to 42. Uh, and first price is indicated um, in the price here IPO price around 38, so at the lower range, which is already a first indication, probably demand is not that high. It's common sense, but it's the only information we have and, and the information we can use then. Um, and in fact, the IPO price, as we will see, was 38. Well, if we only have this price, well, what, what, what would you think is the most important, most interesting level everyone is watching? most likely 38 that's all and um then we can we can start to build him a, a trade hypothesis based on this information alone on this one price but it will act as natural so-called anchor as we will see um, in addition to that hot ipos usually also um see underwriters who are called tier one institutions 
So um, a hot offering like Robin Hood, for example, sees a tier one institution like Goldman Sachs or um, JP Morgan, for example, but also Morgan Stanley, Credit Suisse, um, also Deutsche Bank, not sure, <laughs> not sure if Deutsche is still <laughs> considered tier one bank, but um, yeah, all in all, what we can say is that usually you have these underwriters here. And um, so why is this of interest? Because there's a next point, which is, um, um, simply speaking um, easy to understand there's the ego question so let's say you have goldman sachs and jp morgan for example underwriting an ipo and then you see that there's no demand but the selling pressure is so high that the stock continues to sell off right from the open and as we will see that was exactly the case in robin hood so now we bounce sharply higher but um on the day of the ipo when everyone was watching the stock um, I, in fact, I had to just look up um, where, where we currently trade. Um, so that's that's one one thing why I mentioned that, because I had this stock on my agenda on the first day, on the second day. But then when I saw that volume dried out a little and there was no such um, clear levels to trade off, well, I, I don't look at the stock anymore. It's not interesting for me anymore. And that's a natural reaction. And one to keep in mind, because on the day one, when everyone is looking um, at the stock, Hmm. Well, just imagine how embarrassing it would look if now we see um, a failure here or um, a bad IPO. What is a bad IPO? We drop the IPO price, for example. So 38, everyone has 38 in mind, and then we see a flush out and, and um, um, people selling their stock once we drop 38. Now you're Goldman Sachs, where you are a, a guy at Goldman Sachs who's responsible for this IPO. And um, you know plenty of guys in the investment banking world, um, guys who will probably laugh at you in the evening at the bar um, because you failed at the IPO. It was an embarrassment for you then. So ego-based, what will you do? Certainly you will make sure that the price um, will be defended. 38 is a price where you have to see that the stock trades above that price. And this is a natural reaction. So that means if you have a pricing range to, to give some clear numbers, 18 to 20, for example, and the deal is priced and the IPO price is at 25, um, then such a tier one institution naturally says, we want to make it a success once and, and, and how does it, what, what is a success? Well, if the stock trades at the end of the day after the IPO took place above 25, for example. Um, and that, by the way, let me just, let me just see, I think. Okay, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just thought that I, that I took out some, some, um, um, some text here, but yes. So this is, this is a next psychological aspect, which needs um, um, a deeper consideration. And um, so now let's, let's have a look here at the Robinhood IPO um, and, and give a clear example. And um, first of all, you probably have heard about Robinhood. So Robinhood is an American uh, financial service provider headquartered in Menlo Park, California. Um, it's known for offering commission-free trades of stocks and exchange-traded funds via its mobile app introduced in March 2015. They also went into the crypto space. Probably have heard about the developments around Dogecoin, for example, was also heavily and and, and yeah, heavily discussed, in fact, in social media and in, in, in forums. Um, they're known for for their um, uh, uh, they're they're known for for their for their um, slogan. They want to democratize uh, trading for the retail class, uh, client, retail customers. Problem with that is that after the developments around GME, we don't want to dig too deep into this matter now, uh, but well, it became clear everyone within this industry knew that. Um, um, so every professional trader knows, well, if you do not pay for a service, so commission-free trading, for example, well, most likely you are the product then. So this is the same, which is true when, when it comes to, let's say, a Gmail um, um, account, for example. So if you, if you don't have to pay for your email account or for whatever, advertisement, whatever, most likely you are the product and your data is stored, sold, and you are used and your behavior is used to make business out of it. Simple as that. So, and it's um, similar in trading. And so, what they are known for is selling order flow to HFTs, for example, like Citadel, um, who most likely made plenty of money um, with the developments which took place then in Robinhood afterwards uh, last week with this sharp squeeze. But um, this is something to keep in mind, and uh, this is something where this this um, uh, slogan, democratized trading. Sounds a little um, hypocritical, let's say. It's like, it's uh, difficult. Um, by the way, one second, please. I, I will already here give some further informations. 
um, so for for uh, the developments, I have to just um, um, check my my uh, stats here for trading. One second, um, I do this um, um, every time. In fact, so uh, you're probably already used to this. So today, the, the question you probably have is: um, Do I have stocks on my on my watch list for U.S. trading right now? Um, yes, I have. First of all, it's Fubo. Um, it's based on quite good earnings they delivered yesterday after um, markets and also upping their guidance. And um, as of now, the key level seems to be 33. And, and we, what's very, very interesting here in case of Fubo is that we are trading above the um, uh, yesterday's highs and also above the um, 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 after hours and pre-market highs or in the region around, I think, um, which gives us um, um, a chance here to get to see um, probably a strong opening drive target is for a momentum scope, we call this, um, which could be of interest then uh, for a push up to 30, 36. I'm sorry, 35. Um, and um, so I, I'd like to play this from the long side um, if there's a chance, but most likely I won't play it at all. It's just for information purposes to, to double check it and then to learn something still, uh, because obviously I'm within this webinar, so I can trade the stock now and momentum scope it. But just to, to, to give you an idea um, what I'm currently doing here, uh, my main focus will likely be on Moderna again and the uh, potential top out here. Um, but this needs some development, so because there the inflection for me today is 470. So um, uh, if we if we hold below, that's probably a sign that we are not yet done on the downside after yesterday's drop. Um, so this is the the level to watch. But here um, chart needs to find a price first. So, so price discovery needs to take place, and thus I, I have time here, and I don't need to to to, to hurry or something like that. Um, so let's come back to to today's presentation. So who's Roman Hot? Then. Um, uh, here, some interesting numbers were, were published um, um, at the beginning of July, once uh, the um, 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 company here, Robin Hood, filed um, a an, an, uh, securities prospectus with the um, SEC. First of all, it showed that the um, customer account opening um, increased by 143% in 2020. So they doubled their business um, in terms of clients having an account with them. And um, what certainly was of interest was that in Q1, 2021 here, um, Robinhood welcomed an additional 12.5 million traders. So that was a massive inflow um, from, from, from retail money, which flew into the company again, um, based on certainly AMC, GME hype, the Dogecoin hype um, in the crypto space and all that. Um, and uh, based on that, I, I mean, um, that this is something to, we have to keep in mind. So um, I, I, I remember a time retail trading um, was considered to be a dump money or um, not being capable of, of moving markets. Well, this has dramatically changed. Um, and here, why do I say that? Well, there are websites, for example, like swaggystocks.com. Um, what they do is uh, they, for example, analyze um, here the Reddit forum um, on Wall Street. Uh, I'm sorry, Wall Street bets. Those are, this, is, this is the name behind this. And what they do is the mentioning of stocks and ticker symbols here. And if it's positive or negative, and then you get already an impression on what's currently hot and what's not. Coin is the most mentioned ticker symbol here after um, um, its numbers yesterday. So Bitcoin, crypto, coin, the stock is hot. That's one of the reasons why certainly you should have um, 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 a closer eye here on coin that day. Um, PFE, this is Pfizer. I'm not sure whether this is so interesting. I think Moderna is far more interesting. Also Moderna is mentioned quite often here. Um, Fubo, next one here is also quite hot. Um, and in addition to that, let me just see, do we have Hood? There we have it. So Hood is also mentioned. So within the top 20, I'd say, I, said, I haven't counted it, but I think it's within the top top 20, um, at least top 15, definitely. So Hood is also mentioned. It's hot. It's a hot stock right now. Um, and something something to, to keep in mind, in fact. Um, so And, and um, that being said, brings us here then um, to some numbers which bring up the question, is the company fairly um, valued, let's say, or um, um, what, what's the market cap? So what we've, what we've seen here um, so far in Q1, um, the numbers which were presented within this, the securities perspective was that we saw um, a 522 million turnover, US dollar um, um, turnover, and um, mainly driven by GME, AMC, and, and also um, um, the, the crypto hype here, which took place. Um, but the company posted a loss of a staggering 1.4 billion USD. 
And um, I have now, um, I have I have not um, pointed this here out, but um, the the um, um, pricing range, 38 to 42, brought the company, brought Robin Hood to a market cap of something like, I think, 30, 30 billion, 35, this, this range around, um, 30 to 35 billion, which was quite high, given the fact that the company in the fourth quarter, oh, no, I'm sorry, September, September uh, 20, um, they were valued at around 11.5 to 12 billion. That's like threefold. Not really sure whether this 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 massive inflow uh, and 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 customer um, 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 account opening here, whether whether this justifies such a jump. It's also something to keep in mind. Once we look back here um, at another um, area I, I, I prepared, it's finwiz.com. It's also for free. You can uh, here check out some um, stats on the, on the company. Right now, at the current pricing here, we see a market cap of um, 42 billion, around 42 billion, which is also quite high, if, if you ask me, given their overall a business outlook and, and growth um, um, outlook probably, but um, still, it's uh, something something here uh, which is which is then of interest and uh, also answers to some extent the question why I was more kind of um, bearish, in fact, for the company um, um, on the day of the IPO. And um, so now, what I want to show you is the levels to watch and uh, what I obviously obviously pointed out. By the way, this is wrong. It's not hood daily. It's a it's a one minute chart. So um, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, it's a one one minute chart. It's not a daily chart. Um, it's the first day, yes, but it's not a daily chart. It's one minute. One candle is one minute. Um, and now I wanna I wanna give you some 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 lump numbers at hand here. You can use in your trading in the future once you're um, I'm here looking watching um, an IPO in this context. So first of all, uh, what we look at is the opening print. This is the blue line. This is 38. Okay, and um, so what you can already. Uh, what we can obviously see here, and let me just guide you here through what happened and why this region was of interest. So the stock opens at 38, and then the market um, finds itself in the price discovery period. And here in this context, we also get the IPO high and low. So the high was around $40 that day, uh, while the low here was somewhere around 35. And then something interesting happened. Um, after an initial pop, the stock sold off right from the start of the day. Again, remember, Goldman Sachs underwriter, JP Morgan underwriter, um, this is something you don't like. This is, this is embarrassing. Um, and you're probably not willing to take for an extended period of time, let's say. So after, after we saw some selling pressure then hitting here, um, we dropped the IPO high low, which was again, 35 to 40. We dropped 35, made new intraday lows. And then what, what happened was in fact, um, that we that we um, saw around 33, um, here someone stepping in, pushing the price aggressively higher. Uh, that was most likely the underwriters, the ones who said, "Okay, we we can't take it anymore." So the stock traded more than 10% um, in the red for the for the day on the first day of trading after the first half an hour, well, not even half an hour, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, um, and then the, the underwriters say, "Okay, well, guys, we can't take it anymore. We have to push the, the stock price back." And now remember the anchor in this context. The anchor here is 38. So just imagine you're now someone who bought the stock right on the open, or you probably bought the stock here in this drop lower because he said, well, now the stock looks like a bargain and, and most likely will, will rise. Um, but you see that it's not helping. That's not, hap that's not happening. So you're probably buying, 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 buying. And then what you can see, if you look at the so-called volume weighted average price, you see that it's around 36. And then the market starts to bounce. Here around 36, it starts to, to stabilize. And then after it recaptures 36, it pops into this anchor. And here a natural human reaction takes place. People say, okay, I just wanted to see the market bringing me back to break even so that I can close out the position and just say, okay, that wasn't a hot IPO. That wasn't a big success. I'm out here. I just wanted to make sure I'm breaking even on the trade. And that's, this is what happens here. So you can see that the top price here is 38. It's like, it's, it's like if, if there was a wall and, 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 and the classic psychological reaction based on the anchor, which was given by the fact that, that with the IPO price was at, at 38, we bounced from there. So now the question comes into play, okay, how can we play this then? 
profitably. And what, what can we do here at this point? Well, first of all, you have 38 as a clear entry level. Once you see that the market can't clear 38 anymore, has trouble here, you can see it's not just it, it's not just like you're shooting a ball on um, at a wall and then it bounces and it's like boom and it, it just crashes. No, but we stabilize here in this region and you had plenty of opportunities to short against 38, probably 37, 90. And the clear level to risk at is slightly above 38. So probably you say, the, the slight spike here, I think, was uh, probably was 38 or 4. I'm not really sure anymore. But um, if you say I give it, let's say, 5 cents more on this level, I'm shorting here at 37.90 around this region with a stop 38.10. Um, you have max 20 cent risk. And then you see the drop here down to 36 again. This region, which which was um, accepted before, it's also the WIWAP at this moment. It's at the volume weighted average price. This is something. Um, it's not like the classic um, um, moving average you put in your um, you put in your chart, um, which which is which is based on let's say the closing prices of each candle. Then you're you're looking at like an EMA fifty or something like that. But in this case, um, what you see is it's the um, average price which was paid here at which level and where. Yeah, in fact, market participants start to break even, for example, to just give it an, a better idea. And here, once we once we bounce into that level, you had a clear of stabilization. So that was a, probably a trade, which, how long did it take? Probably IPO happened at, at I think it was 6.20 or something, 6.25 German time. So that trade probably took something like an hour, probably two. Uh, it was it was already in the second half of the trading day, um, but you have a potential reason here to 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 book profits, um, and then based on that, by the way, um, I haven't prepared this now, but you can also use the levels here, which played a role um, at the next day. For example, in this case, um, it's not just the closing price. I'm not really sure whether the closing price is so important, but what I like to look at is the WIWAP close. So the volume weighted average pricing, a um, uh, volume weighted average price, the price which was um, paid on average from market participants here. And this closed, in fact, at around 37 that day. It was 37, I think. 37, 36, 36, 37, I'm not sure. Um, but the thing is, um, so I get the numbers, by the way, I'm, I'm not within here Admiral's um, 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 MetaTrader, but I use uh, TradingView as an external um, research platform then and enter my trades within Admirals. So just that you get an idea why, why we do not have the, the um, 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 WeWop here in, in this context. And um, so by the way, FUBU just dropped 32. Oh, I don't like this anymore. So uh, there was a short pop into the open here, but um, now it's selling off. So let me just see what, what, what Moderna does. Currently fighting with 440. Yeah, probably short side. Let's see. Let's see whether we whether we hold below 4.43. So pre-market lows around or no, here after ours was 4.40. Yeah, let's just see. Um, we walk close. Okay, so um, so we walk um here in this context delivers again um, a, a price like an anchor from the day before. So market participants look at this price, and this is a level where you see okay now. The dust has settled, and those who probably hoped to some extent that the stock will turn green over the day, because well, you just um, um, hope that like Goldman Sachs or JPM are, are are pushing the price higher, defending the IPO price here in this context, but they don't. Or probably they they intervened, they stepped in, but it, they were incapable of, of delivering enough demand to push the price higher. Well, then probably it's better to sell off. Where do you want to sell off? The price where I'm breaking even on average. This is then we were close in this context. And then you use this as a natural resistance, line of resistance. And in fact, we, we didn't massively drop the day after. Um, and in fact, squeeze then higher. But this is then how you can build also profitable trading ideas after the IPO took place. So it's clear levels you can trade off right on the day of the IPO, especially based on the IPO price, but also the IPO high and low, but also then on the volume weighted average price. And thus you have an anchor market participants look at in this context. Um, there's a more then also advanced um, um, way to look at things that's round levels. Big players often place um, so-called block orders at levels of elevated um, trading volume. This is also something to keep in mind, but it's just, this is also something you should keep in mind when trading in general stocks. So round levels, 
levels are usually um, the levels um, you look at. So no, no coincidence that I'm talking about round numbers when, when for example, referring as of now um, to, the, to Moderna or saying 440 is um, my level to watch. So the reason why I do that is because I know the round number are, is way more significant than let's say 439.73 or something like that. Um, so just, just to give you, give you an idea. Um, but now let's come back to the IPO. <clears throat> So first of all, I was um, already a BS here um, to the short side, as I've become, uh, it, it became clear. I was now wrong when looking at it from another perspective or a little later because we popped higher. Um, but overall, from a fundamental perspective, I think um, um, the overall picture hasn't dramatically changed um, because on the day of the IPO, I have already a BS based on the numbers I have, like where is the market cap in this context, but also um, where do we see based on the first indications and in comparison to the to the um, pricing range between 38 to 42, where is the first print to be expected? And it's at the lower range of this pricing range. This is a weak potential. Uh, this is a clear sign that there's weak demand for the IPO. And um, so here, uh, this is what I what I um, just already explained. So on the slide before, after the initial drop here, um, it was likely that the underwriters stepped in, pushed the price higher, but found resistance then in this anchor price at 38, the IPO price everyone's looking at here, which is um, thus becoming a psychological level to trade off with a small risk, but still a quite attractive um, um, reward on the downside. I mean, just imagine you're, you're going for a $2 reward on this context um, here on the downside from 38 down to 36 uh, with just 20 cents uh, risk. This is a 10 to 1 um, a risk reward, which is um, a 1 to 10, which is which is kind of um, highly interesting, I think, and very, very attractive and per perfectly illustrates, I think, why um, you should be you should be um, um, yeah, keen on, on learning how to trade IPOs. But now let's close the cycle here uh, with some further um, uh, thoughts on this IPO and probably also the, the broader market and where we stand right now. Um, as of now, I have to say, I haven't double checked now the, the charts on AMC, on GME here, um, but what we certainly can say that in the past, if we've seen such um, IPOs with a buzz around it um, and directly connected to certain de developments in the market over the last months in this context, um, that this was like a sentiment extreme, which was said. That has been the case here um, when Glencore went public, uh, was the top of commodities. It was um, once Blackstone went uh, public, that was the top of private equity. I mean, this is very easily speaking, but already you will see that it's not that far um, um, a fetch to, to have such thoughts. Look at the Coinbase IPO, the most recent one, and the top in Bitcoin. Probably, let's see whether that was really the top in crypto, but um, um, at least we, we saw a bounce where we, we saw a drop of 50% of prices from there. And um, so now it's probably also worth to consider um, the Robinhood IPO to be the start of the end of the meme stock boom. And now um, it's not just meme stocks probably, but there's also the broader market, um, which was, which saw massive retail inflows over the last year. So um, this is a screenshot from the 29th of July and the S&P 500 here. Um, it's a one minute chart and look, look at, I mean, Probably it's a pure coincidence, it might be the case, but but still, especially when you see the developments then into the evening here. Um, just have a look here. That was once um, Hood went public. That was the first tick, was an immediate pop down. And then we saw the stabilization, the bounce back to the um, um, opening print. So um, at, at the 38, uh, and we topped out here again, also in the S&P 500 and then sold off from there. Um, and yeah, went as low as uh, slightly below 4,400. As of now, market has stabilized in a very tight range, dropping volume, dropping volatility. Um, so probably that's a little too much, but still something to, to keep in mind and how I come to this um, um, conclusion. That's probably the end of the meme stock boom, respectively. That's probably the end of also um, the, where the top is probably near in equity. So it's not that I'm, I'm a top picker or something like that, or someone who is um, um, I'm saying we'll see a crash rather sooner or later, but at least I'd say that the risk reward for long engagements from the current levels after, I think the S&P hasn't seen a drop of 5% now for over 190 days. So more than half a year without a 5% drop um, um, in the overall market. I think this is historic. I've, I'm not really sure whether that has been the case 
ever before. And this is usually a sign that it's probably the calm before the storm, let's say, and something to keep in mind. Um, but these are just some final thoughts on where to build from here on what I presented on the IPO here um, and, and how to trade the IPO. And this is exactly where the summary also will look at here. So initial public offerings, short IPOs refer to the process of offering shares of a private corporation here to the public in a new stock issuance. And professional traders like IPOs for several reasons. One is, first of all, that they offer very easy trades, quotation marks here, um, but they have clean technical levels to trade up from, to risk against. And um, thus, they offer from time to time a very, very um, attractive risk reward ratios. And um, in, in case here of um, short-term traders, um, recent developments in the IPO sector, also something to point out, also point to a potential bubble here, resulting in diminishing risk reward trades investments for longer-term investors in this context. And this is also something to keep in mind if you ever plan to um, um, go with a direct IPO investment or something like that. Probably wait a second. Right now, seems a little hot, seems a little... Um, um, yeah, a little bubble is, 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 is building there or built already and it's probably about to pop and then um, the more, one or two such IPO plays um, if you don't trade them actively as we do usually as traders um, from a longer term perspective probably turn out to be not that attractive in, uh, in the aftermath. And um, that brings us here to the next webinar, which will take place on Friday. 13th of August, 2021, together with Paul, um, what you, oh, by the way, it's not Monday. I'm sorry, this is not right, Friday. So, uh, so Friday, join Paul, it's not me. What happened here? Okay, join Paul Wallace to learn. So my dear colleague, Paul Wallace will be here and he will talk to you about managing risk during your intraday trading. So we covered risk to some extent already and Paul will give you some deeper thoughts on this in general. In fact, why managing risk is so important. One question he will answer, but also what you can do uh, um, um, to help yourself in this context and what are some additional tactics in fact, and techniques that you can use to improve your interday trading from a risk perspective. So 13th of August, 2021, register for the webinar 2 p.m. London upmails.com, check out here the um, um, education section and then a webinar is top and there we'll find all informations around this upcoming webinar. Um, here are, again, the contact details from Admirals. So send all your emails over there. Um, also, again, subscribe to the YouTube channel in this context. Leave a thumb up here if you, if you just liked what you saw. Here's the risk disclaimer. Um, so highly regulated broker, not just um, um, FCA regulated, but also CISIC, ASIC regulated, also now with an entity here in, in Jordan, for example. So definitely worth a deeper look. And um, so that's, that's, it around, that's it around my webinar for today. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Again, subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, leave a thumb up here if you like what you saw. If you're watching this on YouTube, all the best. Happy trading. Watch your stops. Talk to you again next week. I look forward to it. Bye-bye.